Alexander Skvortsov on the left, Artemiev in the middle, Swanson on the right as they say goodbye to their colleagues who uh, they have been aboard the station with since May. Saying goodbye to each other. A very close-knit crew. Skvortsov, uh, Swanson, Ar and Artemiev about to... Uh, to uh, Moscow Station. All right, so I think they will be going and transitioning to the vehicle already. Yes, you have our go for that. And uh, the Expedition 40 crew uh, now inside uh, the orbital module, the upper section of the uh, Soyuz TMA-12M spacecraft. One final round of photos, final waves, before they close the hatch and begin their preparations for undocking. All right, let's count the crew members. One, two, three. Yes, our crew is here. That's correct. So, please give us a go. Is this the right crew that needs to go home? Yes, everything looks right to me. Perfect. All right, you have a go to close the hatches. Please inspect the surface and the ceiling uh, closely before closing the hatches. Yes, copy. All right, they will close their hatch first, and then we will close our hatch. That's correct. The uh, process of uh, coming home for these three crew members uh, begins an extraordinarily long day, a day that uh, turns into about a 24-hour day, in fact, if not more. And there the hatch is closed uh, to the uh, Soyuz spacecraft at uh, 2.48 p.m. Central Time. Again, hatch closure at 2.48 p.m. Central Time. Steve Swanson. Alexander Skvortsov and Oleg Artemiev aboard their Soyuz TMA-12M spacecraft. Uh, they soon will uh, place the transfer of power uh, from the uh, International Space Station to the Soyuz's onboard batteries and uh, will begin the process of conducting leak checks and uh, donning their Sokol launch and entry suits. Yes, we can see everything perfectly, that you're closing the hatches now. Only one hatch. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, they're closing their hatch. Here in the uh, flight control uh, room here in Houston, uh, to begin with, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is presided over by Flight Director Matt Abbott on the right side of your screen, joined on console to his right in the middle by astronaut Mark Van de Heij, who has been talking to the International Space Station's three remaining crew members who are on board, and Mark Bowman is also on console, the Soyuz systems expert for the astronaut office here in Houston, uh, who will be uh, monitoring Soyuz systems as uh, the three Expedition 40 crew members make the trek home from orbit. Outside of Moscow in the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryov, uh, this view of the uh, large flight control room there from a balcony camera as uh, the Russian flight controllers are uh, prepared for the deorbit burn of the uh, Soyuz uh, TMA-12M uh, TMA spacecraft that is scheduled just 13 and a half minutes from now and a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan just one hour and six minutes from now. The uh, landing is scheduled at 9.23 p.m. Central Time, which will be 8.23 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Thursday morning, about an hour and a half after sunrise. 
all of the Soyuz systems are in excellent shape. Uh, the Soyuz actually undocked from the International Space Station at uh, 6.01 p.m. Central Time as it flew 260 miles above the Earth over eastern Mongolia. You can uh, see in this replay of video a short time after the actual physical separation of the Soyuz from the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the International Space Station's Russian segment, uh, the uh, Soyuz flying free of the International Space Station uh, after having first arrived at the complex back on March 28th. The uh, command Everything was sent to open the hooks that held uh, the uh, Soyuz Copy. in tow to the Poisk module's docking port. Uh, the Soyuz flying free about three minutes after physical separation and the undocking. Uh, a quick 15-second burst of the Soyuz's engines and a separation burn initiated an opening rate that enabled the Soyuz to drift Copy. to a distance uh, where it is now, about 12 kilometers away from the station, as the stage is set for the deorbit burn just 12 minutes from now. And uh, just a reminder as we stand by for the deorbit burn that um, as uh, the Soyuz moves further and further uh, away from the station, lower into the Earth's atmosphere, uh, heading for entry interface at the time, but uh, Soyuz Commander Alexander Skvortsov in the center seat of the descent module, of course, has been instructed to continue reporting. The National Space Station is expected to be ratty at times, choppy. Uh, we may lose communications from time to time, but uh, Soyuz Commander Alexander Skvortsov in the center seat of the descent module, of course, has been instructed to continue reporting uh, the status of the spacecraft and the crew to the Russian flight control team in Koryov. We see the uh, free gyro and the um, uh, cap has been opened. Everything is nominal. About 25 seconds now till the initiation of the deorbit burn. We have 15 uh, seconds until thrust reactivation. Everything is nominal. We're feeling fine. We have thrust reactivation. In 7 7. Spherical tank pressure 142144. And uh, confirmation received that the deorbit burn is underway. For seven. Expedition 40 crew members Steve Swanson of NASA and Russian cosmonauts Alexander Skvortsov and Oleg Artemiev are on their way home. 30 seconds operating. Propellant consumption 31 kilograms. 16 decimals on uh, thruster deactivation. We have GECA, we have thermal sensor. And uh, telemetry received confirmation from Skvortsov that the deorbit burn is complete and good. We have so the crew is uh, decelerated its uh, orbital velocity and now uh, will be uh, slowly entering uh, the Earth's atmosphere a short time from now. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere a short time from now. The next major milestone will be the module separation that will occur at 8.58 p.m. Central Time. Everything at an altitude of 86.8 miles. There you see the animation of the module separation. The only section left uh, to survive uh, will be the Soyuz capsule, the descent module itself, uh, with its heat shield. Uh, once uh, the uh, Soyuz uh, reaches uh, much lower into the Earth's atmosphere, that heat shield is jettisoned, exposing uh, the altimeters at the base of the spacecraft uh, which will uh, sense uh, altitude and velocity, feed that into the Soyuz computers uh, to trigger the chain of events that will be the parachute deployment and the firing of the soft landing engines at the landing site to complete the trek home for Expedition 40. Everything is nominal copy. And now uh, we have confirmation that uh, the final uh, helicopter is airborne heading for the landing site, so all of the NASA personnel working in uh, 
concert with uh, the Ros Aviatsa Search and Recovery Forces. Uh, all personnel now airborne for the landing site about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. This is Mission Control Houston, our first view from the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, where uh, the sun rose at uh, 7.53 a.m. 6.53 a.m. Kazakhstan time, showing uh, an almost cloudless sky, good conditions, very light winds reported, temperatures uh, in the mid-50s Fahrenheit, virtually ideal conditions uh, for the homecoming of Steve Swanson, Alexander Skvortsov, and Oleg Artemiev. On the ground uh, at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, uh, a uh, variety of all-terrain vehicles, other support personnel, and again, uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters are in transit. They'll be arriving in the landing zone uh, within the next few minutes or so uh, in advance of uh, the Soyuz's arrival itself with landing schedule just 26 minutes from now. And now we've received confirmation from uh, the Russian Mission Control Center that uh, we've had a good module separation. So that uh, critical activity has been successfully completed. Uh, next uh, on the entry timeline is uh, the entry interface uh, where temperatures around the spacecraft uh, will build to uh, about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit as uh, the Soyuz uh, makes its way toward the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan. Again, a good module separation reported uh, in telemetry received from the Russian Mission Control Center. 427 is the G-load. The entry offset was a few seconds before inaudible. We are feeling well. What about the SR pressure, descent module pressure, guys? Eight to seven. Okay, so the descent, uh, descent is going nominally. And the offset again, guys, could you repeat the offset, please? One second, one second only. Okay, copy, guys. Thank you, everything is nominal. Zero five zero two forty nine is the actual reentry time. Okay, copy. The G load is decreasing. As you can hear, uh, okay, communications so now uh, being relayed uh, through the Antonov uh, fixed wing aircraft uh, that is okay. flying around the landing zone southeast of Jezkazgan. Okay. Uh, the crew reporting so it's in great shape, that the vehicle you, uh, is uh, the performing normally, is uh, and that G loads uh, that we build up to about four to five Gs uh, just after uh, entrance into the Earth's atmosphere are beginning to decrease. Stabilizing. Coming up on the point of uh, the command to uh, begin the process of opening up the chutes. This is Mission Control Houston, and there is your Soyuz spacecraft under its parachute. The chutes uh, have been uh, deployed nominally on time. Let's move to the as we are now just 13 minutes away from touchdown. Great view of uh, the Soyuz uh, in its final moments of flight with its crew in good shape on board. Everything in great shape uh, in what so far has been a textbook return home for Swanson, Skvortsov, and Artemiev. Great.
The Russian Mi-8 helicopters carrying NASA personnel and uh, Russian uh, recovery uh, personnel now uh, circling in the vicinity of the landing zone about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. The fact that we're receiving this video as early as we are, an indication that the Soyuz is heading for a bullseye landing. Opening it up over one. Go ahead. That uh, beeping sound that you hear is a radio beacon uh, that is uh, coming from the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, which uh, relays uh, positional information to the Antonov uh, fixed wing aircraft and the other recovery personnel at the landing site. So, what does it come out to be? saw the heat shield uh, being jettisoned on schedule, something uh, we rarely have an opportunity to see. The base of the Soyuz uh, now exposed uh, with its altimeters, uh, computing uh, positional altitude and velocity information to its onboard computers. Pressure in the About uh, nine and a half minutes until touchdown, everything going very smoothly. The Soyuz uh, is moving toward its landing site in fine fashion. Guys, right now you need to uh, tighten the knee pads. Issues uh, being reported uh, by either the crew on board the Soyuz, which is uh, gently descending under its main parachute, or the uh, search and recovery forces uh, that are in position now in a uh, circular flight pattern around the landing zone. Once uh, the Soyuz touches down, uh, then they'll begin uh, to land in uh, sequential fashion in their helicopters uh, with all-terrain vehicles al already in position and ground forces ready uh, to begin the process of uh, erecting an inflatable medical tent nearby and, uh, of course, to extract the crew from the descent module itself. And uh, there is the Soyuz, and you can see uh, some of the uh, Russian helicopters uh, flying in the area. Uh, with a uh, good view of the uh, Soyuz under its chutes as we are standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. Touchdown right on the button at 9.23 p.m. Central Time, 8.23 a.m. on Thursday morning on the steppe of Kazakhstan. The Expedition 40 crew, Steve Swanson of NASA and Russian cosmonauts Alexander Skvortsov and Oleg Artemyev are home back on Earth after 169 days in space. Yeah, then. Recovery forces are by the capsule, uh, 
preparing to begin the process of extracting the crew. So once again, uh, as you can see, uh, the Soyuz uh, landed upright on a cloudless morning in uh, the steppe of Kazakhstan uh, after a perfect re-entry and a textbook landing. Продолжение следует... 